we starting? Am I ready, Bill? Well, good morning, good morning. Good to see everybody. Got a pretty decent crowd for a nice day. Before we get started, that's a couple things I got to do. Had to push that button. I don't remember to do that. Just uh, one thing before we start, if you remember with me, it was just a little over one year ago that Phil Hoffman passed away. And I miss Phil. I think Phil was probably the first person I met uh, here, other than employees, when we moved in. And I think, uh, as I remember Phil, I remember his dedication to this group and to the many Masonic groups he was a member of and to the Veterans Roll Call. He, he broke his back for those three organizations. And it doesn't seem like a year in a way, it seemed like three or four years yep. as, we, <laughs> as we struggled through trying to fill the vacancy because you don't replace people like Phil Hoffman. Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and we thank you for allowing us to trod this broken world with Phil. We thank you for his efforts on our behalf as he was with us and we just pray, Lord, that he's having a lot of joy and fun wherever he is. Now, Lord, we pray that you would be with our meeting today. May everything we do be pleasing in your sight. And use this time that we might bring glory and honor to your precious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Lord, it be. Would you please rise for the pledge with me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, thank you. I my pen, I won't be able to mark things off if I don't. Joanne Starr called last night. Joanne has COVID. We are not done with that uh, intruder in our midst. And I guess from my perspective, all I can say is be aware it's still out there. John is okay, we guess. Uh, Connie said yesterday he tested okay. But uh, now in the aftermath of COVID. So Joanne won't be with us. She did tell me that most of the information is on her desk up there. If anybody needs it, in the center page, it's got another one coming, and it just doesn't seem like very long ago until we had that one. All right. We sent out the July meeting minutes to everybody. Everybody get a chance to take a peek at them. We got any suggestions, objections, corrections? I didn't even get it. I don't, you get it on, on a computer or anything. Well, you, you don't get it. I, I, there is a, like 10 or 11 people that don't have email addresses. At exactly. this point, I don't use it. well, at this point in time, they are getting the agenda and that's, that's the extent of it. Now there's 10 or 11. Uh, one time when I checked it, are you ready for this? It was only two or three of the 10 or 11 that ever paid an activity fee. Huh. Uh, so I, but I will try to remember, Barbara, you'll well, get to me. That's okay, that's okay. Oh, I'll try to remember. <laughs> okay. Anybody got any observations? All right, could I have a motion to accept? Jerry, CJ. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you like treasure report, Mary? Well, it was a very quiet month in July. Um, all we did was deposit forty-one dollars and thirty cents, uh, partly from activity fees and partly from. Uh, Walter Frank donations, and we ended up with 
of the end of July, 1,144 and 71 cents. Uh, no undeposited money or unclear checks. The number of paid activities this year is 70 people now. Questions? Questions, concerns, objections? Can I have a motion to approve, please? Aaron Wilson. Larry, thank you. I got one other thing, just a second. The question was asked last last month about how that 70 compares, and I had the three months of data down at the house readily available that I could look at without doing anything other than finding it. And the biggest amount we historically collected in those three years was 46. People? 46. Uh, activity fees. Activity fee. From 46. 46. 42, 46, 42. Now that 21, 22, and 23. 21 was COVID. I don't know how those people decided to give to us because we didn't do anything. And uh, then it was 46 and 42. Question. Yes. Are new residents to the villas made aware when they sign up their lease papers that there would be other fees that they might owe, like our activity fee? Do they even know that? We didn't. I didn't know it. Until like like what fee? Like the activity fee. No. That is, that is totally voluntary. Really? Yes, we ask for it. Nobody has ever had their arm bent to get it that I know of. Mm. We just remind people of where we are, but it is, uh, and, and Phil, Phil has a new word. What, what word do you want to use for that instead of uh, voluntary? He, Phil has a new word that he wants us to put in place there. I'm not thinking about that. But. <laughs> Maybe I'll just start visiting all those that haven't <laughs> well, according to my wife, that should work. <laughs> I, I'm sure that when Peggy visits, the activity fee in the residence council is one of the points of what talking about. about. Yes. Yeah, but but it is not a mandatory fee. We have never sent anybody a bill that I know of. Okay. All right, we're going to hear from Joanne Flynn. I've had a busy month. One sympathy card. Um, I would say that it's to Peggy uh, because she lost her son in an accident. Two get well cards. Three thinking of you cards. And if you have neighbors or someone that you know, please call me so I can get a card to them. It means a lot to people that are homebound. Thank you. And especially if you hear someone with COVID because they're very homebound <laughs> for a week. Thank you, Jill and family. Betty was talking with me about the Walter Frank Social Center and we're we're continuing going on and going on. There's nothing special happening down there. They're still playing bingo and what, still playing euchre or whatever they do down there. So, well, anyhow, nothing exciting. And Peggy could not be with us. She had some place she had to go. But when we get to David, he will he will take he will take care of that. All right, Phil gave me a note on the way in. We know where the men are going tomorrow. Archers in Kettering, right? So that's the, for the seventh. The, the men are headed down to Archers. Good place? I have no idea. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. George says it's good. It'll be all right. All right. And then on the 14th, the Wendy group. The Wendy group is the... Uh, group group and they're headed to Nick's down in Zemian. 
I own right along the road. And never been there, but everybody says it's pretty good. And on the 21st, I presume we're still going to the Fairfield Mall. Did you get enough last month for your trip? Um, did we have enough? Did you go, Sally? I did go. Um, we did go. Carolina. You did go. Yeah. Okay. So now we're down to the ladies on the 28th. Yeah, hi, Pam. Hi. Uh, the ladies are going to Der Dutchman. Der Dutchman. Oh, my oh. goodness. And um, Sorry, I'll the, the time that we leave hi. keeps popping up on the monthly calendar as 11 o'clock, but we leave at 1030, yeah. just like the other luncheons. So, and I'll make a note of that on top of the sign-up sheet, but we leave at 1030. Okay, they're going to Der Dutchman and they're going to eat too much and they're leaving at 10.30. I have a question. If I drive down there, is there no problem for, you know, sitting how many you see? No, but um, if you will first come to the community center so we can count you because I call ahead. Okay. And wherever we go, I I'll call ahead and, so we have a, an accurate count. But Is that call made as you're leaving, Pam? Yeah. Yeah. So, is that call made as you're leaving so yes. it's pretty accurate? Yes. Okay. Yes. That makes sense. Yep. Just just don't drive up there and hope. Well, there in that place there's plenty of room. But there's plenty of room. Of, but some of the restaurants where we've been are not very large. Yeah. So it requires requires advance notice. Hey. <laughs> I remember when, when they used to take two buses at one time and we went to the German village and everything, but now they can't use that other bus, but it used to be that more people got to go. Because I'll be here 11 years to, uh, next month. 11 years. Well, I'm sure David would be happy. He might have to hire another driver. Or he might have to go drive. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, he's shaking his head on that one. All right. David, campus activities. No, don't don't even go that direction. Um, you're talking about archers. Is Steve in here? Uh, Hearst? No. I drove by that the other day, and I thought I've never eaten there. <clears throat> so I, I can't wait to hear hear uh, hear how that went so, uh, for the men's lunch. Um, I'll do Peggy stuff first. I, I don't have a whole lot. Um, you know, we're pretty full down there in the villas. So um, the most recent though, 27C, Judy Sheridan, she moved in this past month, back in July. I didn't get time to look around, see what kind of faces I have out there. But if, it, if there's anybody new here, no, I think we're good. So, hi, Dorothy. Good morning. <clears throat> good morning. So, welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. I didn't, Thank you. That's good to see. Did you, did you walk all the way over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Nice. <laughs> um, but uh, we have 37A. Um, Brian, I know, toured somebody that uh, unit yesterday. He has not given me a name yet. Um, so, uh, so that one we're still holding off on. We have 6A, Carmen Rawlings. Her name is Carmen Rawlings. And she's supposed to move in today when I talked to her two weeks ago. But that doesn't mean it's going to happen. But uh, I'll be popping in down there. I talked to Brian this morning. Uh, she told him a different date. But she told me this two weeks ago, and it was supposed to be today. Um, but other than that, uh, we don't have anything, uh, any other openings down in uh, the villas except for 37A. Okay? So that's it for that. <clears throat> Unless I'm missing anything. Am I missing anything down there? I don't think so. You guys are pretty full. Uh, things that are coming up. Um, I hate it when this meeting is the same week as Coffee Connection. So Coffee Connections is Friday. So you're going to hear a repeat of what I'm saying right now on Friday if you show up Friday. But Coffee Connection is this Friday uh, in the community center. Also on Friday, it looks like there's a James Leach music. He's going to be in the auditorium at 2 o'clock. It's not not a good. I mean, there's going to be coffee connection here at one, leech at two. You're going to be here, there, and back for happy hour. So it's going to be a busy afternoon if you want to attempt to try all of those. Um, and on the calendar it says Cincinnati Reds traveling show. <clears throat> so the the Reds Hall of Fame. I, I guess they're going to be here this Wednesday. 
Um, from one to three, it's going to be in the clubhouse. It doesn't say it on the uh, August happenings on where it, where the event's going to be, but it is going to be in the clubhouse. Uh, they're supposed to bring uh, uh, featuring items from the Reds Hall of Fame, and I think the, I think her name's Rosie, the mascot. I think she's going to be here too. So if you could come out and support that, I know Life Enrichment puts a it, it does cost them for that. So. So please, if, you, if you're interested in the Cincinnati Reds, they did have a good game last night, but they did get no hit over the weekend. So you just never know with that team. Uh, the other thing, Boutique will be open this Thursday. Okay, it's the only, there's, there'll be a one call going out. I just put it in. So it's gonna go out, to, what is today, Tuesday? It's gonna go out Wednesday at one o'clock. There's gonna be a one call. But it's the only day this month that the boutique's going to be open. It's going to be Thursday from 11, 11 to 3. 11 to 3. So, uh, next, uh, our event that we got coming up with the events committee. Uh, we have a Friday night cookout, which is Friday, August 23rd. It's from 4 to 6. Uh, we will have a, we did this last year. Um, we, we heard nothing but good things about the food that we served. Uh, we'll have mesquite chicken breast. Um, we'll have it on a brioche bun, potato salad. We're going to do fresh corn on the cob again. So we'll have that, watermelon, and we're going to attempt some lemon shake-ups. So we'll see how the lemon shake-ups That's what we're trying. No, this is uh, the city events committee. This is clubhouse. I don't think I can fit 85 people in uh, Walter Frank. I mean, we could try, but I don't think it'll work. Then uh, in September, we have our fireworks. Since we, uh, we did this last year, we canceled the fireworks in July because if you remember the wildfires that came from Canada, so we had to cancel the fireworks and we postponed it to September. And that worked out well because the, the time actually changes. Well, the time doesn't change, but it gets darker sooner, about an hour sooner. So we have the fireworks coming. That's gonna be on Saturday, September 14th. I'm in the process of making the flyer now because we're trying to round up some food trucks. We've been calling different food trucks for the past couple of weeks, so we're getting we're getting all the details ironed out. But um, that'll be open to all residents, staff, and their families. Okay, and we'll have food trucks. Uh, I believe Matthew's going to entertain again. We'll have a tent set up out there. Fireworks will be approximately 8:45, so instead of 9:45 in July. So that, that works out really good. Other than that, that's all I have on my list. And we, like I said, we have coffee connection on Friday. So if you got any questions, you can save those for Tony. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Everybody wants to question David, and I'll let him out of here. <laughs> I just kind of snuck away from that. Yeah, so. let's kind of snuck away. <laughs> David, we'll get that Friday. Okay. All right. Well, Friday will be a good day. Old business. Still have three things rolling around on our old business list. We have the fall cookout, which is coming September 21, and uh, I'm still waiting for them to set the time for the high state marshal game, and I'm not sure it's going to make any difference. But uh, we'll know next month when we're going to have it's going to be a cookout. Uh, we're going to have hamburgers and the hamburger trimmings and ask you to bring a covered dish of some kind. And we have asked the uh, Springfield Masonic Community Players to provide us with a couple of their skits for entertainment. And uh, hopefully they're working on that. So with a little bit of luck, we'll have a good time eating and eat way too much and have a little bit of fun and enjoy each other's company. So the fall cookout is still rolling around, September 21. We're still working on the <coughs> bylaw revisions. We haven't done much since last month, but we did one important thing. We got to talk to Tony and Dave about it because we had not uh, mentioned that subject to Tony or Dave. And so we are progressing. Uh, we have comments from several people and they are you know, there, there's nothing that, nothing that surprises us. I think we had most of the surprises when the officers got through going, but uh, we expect to have that done sometime. It's not a quick process. Never intended it to be a quick process. 
because when we get it where we'd like to start making proposals to this group and uh, hey this is what we're planning on doing and then it still takes a couple months after that to get it done so we're working on it and uh, have a few things that we have to touch base on I guess for lack of a better term fundraiser we're still planning on selling lottery tickets to be given away at the Christmas dinner, dinner one and dinner two, and hopefully we can make a little bit of money because we do not have much money. And in all truthfulness, I would personally like to see us do two events a year, a welcome new neighbor in the spring and a fall get together. And I remember the day that we had the, the uh, carry in breakfast down at, on the coffee and conversation day and my goodness did we have food uh, I think it hopefully it'll be like that don't think we could get in Walter Frank David as David says it only holds so money so those things are all still in the process anybody else got any old business they'd like to uh, talk about did we let drop through the crack somewhere along the line all right how about new business <coughs> Yes. I just learned when we came in that this door is unlocked and read from eight to five. When did they decide that? Why is it? Well, I, is it all I can secret? tell you is when we met with yes. Tony and David three weeks ago, yeah. two or three weeks ago, that was one of the items we brought up because people had complained about the alarm being annoying. Yes. We did it at that and conversation too. Tony remembered, I believe this is what I, this is my reflection. Tony remembered that once upon a time he promised us when the gates went in, some of these doors was going to be open yeah. through the daytime. So I believe that's what how it happened. Why five? Because people are still coming to dinner at five. Well, I didn't even know the hours on. It is it five, nine. David? It was supposed to be how, nine. how do you know it's five? Well, Frank told me that when we came in, but Frank. I don't know. Pain. Oh, I don't Frank know. Pain? I don't know what the hours are. I've heard it. I have not caught it. Jeanette told me. Jeanette told you? <laughs> well, I would think five would be a little early. Also, I would think at least at least six o'clock and maybe slightly yeah, more past. Coming to pool and, and playing yes. games. I thought nine was fine. That's I, I had never the heard beginning. five since yeah, it started okay. being open, and I have not found it locked. Okay, but I'm glad to hit no Well, that, that, to the best of my knowledge, that's how it came about. We did we did talk with Tony and Dave about that. And it wasn't long after that I noticed it was open. Okay, anything else? New business. Hey, Brian. I've got I've got one. I I promised. Uh, I promised Deb Southward that I would plug her little uh, wellness and center for senior education group. I didn't see her sign up sheet out there. I looked for it and it, she told me the other day she had quite a few, quite a few people on the list for this. Uh, the, the flyer is out there on the wall if you're interested in Deb's activity for, for 60 and over and looking for an opportunity to learn how to stay healthy and meet new people. Well, that probably would work for most of us. <laughs> I think we made 60. <laughs> All right, that sounds great. So, Thanks. if you're interested, please see Deb. She's a, she, I'm sure she's going to be a good program. Hey, Tom? Yes. 7.30 to 5.30 are the doors right now. 7.30 to 5.30. Could you could you comment to somebody that 5:30 is probably a little early? Well, we can, but they're having they're having an issue with the system. So is right it, now 5:30. Okay. Right just now this building? building? Yes, just that. Just door. this building. Just that door. Okay, not all the doors. No, just before. just that door. Okay. Well, it's a start. <laughs> you gotta remember, talk to easy, get through that gate. <laughs> All right, any other new business? I have something. Yes, Our Tom. mail out here for the fillers, our mailbox, people aren't picking up their mail. And sometimes we got a fitness in there like that. So be it. 
That just me. I think we ought to try to do it. I, I, I don't know what you do with it. I, I'm i sure some of those may have walked to the people. Well, some people, I understand, don't even ever come up. Yeah. So. So I noticed when I put stuff in there, some of them are pretty full, but I don't know what we do with them. We we can just stick it in a minute to say, hey, you know, you got a mailbox. Well, if you, if you got a neighbor that, you know, you're noticing their box is yeah. full, can you just take it down to them? Yeah, probably not. Be a good neighbor, that. I guess. So. Yeah. I had one lady complain to me that nobody ever put anything in her box. Oh. And she put ever with the operative word there. And I know Bill gets to go put flyers in there every now and then, and I get to go put flyers in there every now and then. And uh, never is an awful big word. This lady would bound to determine nobody ever gave her anything. You know? <laughs> now, now, maybe somebody don't know their box number is on the bottom and not on the top. I don't know. I, <laughs> the other day, I finally emptied three of them and took it to them that was I knew. Any other new business? I want to I want to talk about a couple of things when, when we met with Tony and Dave here on the 24th. Uh, Tony indicated that there's going to be a tree guy coming around there. They were looking at some of the big trees on bigger trees on campus. Uh, they remember the one that came down down to Davis Lakes and kind of tore up a little bit more than it maybe could have bought it. So they have had a tree guy in looking at the trees, looking at the big trees. And he said that David and Marcy's fence works so well that they've had other requests for them and they're considering some of them. Did the Masonic Square sign over at this corner over here at Consistory, they're trying to debate what they're going to do with that, whether they're going to cut all the brush out of there or relocate it. But anyhow, that's still on the still in the bucket list. It's much better though. They took out it. A tree. They yeah. took it, and he didn't think it looks very nice, and I don't either. So I, I think I think that there's a uh, make it look better and look a little bit more attractive. So, how, however they do that, I'm, I'm sure it's in that bucket list somewhere. And then we did talk with Tony about the bylaws, Tony and Dave, so they know they know what we're working on. But other than that. Anyway? Just a couple quick things. I received word this morning that Maureen Fagan's mother passed away. Maureen serves on the uh, Springfield board, and probably most of you know her as uh, Executive Director of United Senior Services, but uh, don't have any information on on uh, what's going to happen when, but she did pass away this morning. So keep her in, in, in your thoughts. Second item is, is good news, uh, and you've probably already seen, but this last month we received two awards. Number one, we got our five-star rating back, which is not easy to do, uh, and so we're very proud to have that. And it's simply because we've got a leader like Tony, and we've got top staff like David, and the rest of the staff that does such a great job. So we're very pleased and honored to have our five-star uh, rating back. We also had a surprise uh, survey done this last week from the uh, Ohio Health Department. Apparently there were a couple items uh, couple issues that were filed with the health department, but the good news is they came, did their investigation, and found no grounds for either one. Uh, but while they were here, they went ahead and did their summer inspection of our facility, and we ended up with 100% uh, approval rating, no, no, no uh, bad marks for anything, so we're very proud of that, and here again, it's, it's the staff that makes that happen. Uh, I get just a reminder, the quickest way to get information to the board is, is through Tom. And uh, other than that, I thank you all. Thank you, Stanley. Well, Ring's down at the Senior Center 
and she's also the chairperson of the Residents Relations Committee of the Springfield Masonic Community Board of Trustees. And I'll tell you something, she's a pretty sharp lady, if you meet her. She, she wasn't born under a rock, folks. She's a pretty sharp lady. Kind of, kind of uh, asked very good questions. All right, announcements, concerns. Yes, Bill. Yes, uh, I noticed as I came through the intersection uh, from Shadish right to here, people are driving through lanes. There's no uh, stop sign. It's getting very bad there. People are just, they may slow down a little bit, but not very much. But one this morning just zipped them through. Now, what was this, Bill? That's at the, uh, right, right by the uh, garage area. That, that, One of the crossovers. Yeah. 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 Community yeah. And I will say this: stop signs are meant to, for you to stop. And I have observed staff and residents blow them suckers like they're not, not there. It's it's kind of scary. This this Springfield uh, Police Department's area, so <laughs> they, they could come and give tickets if they wanted to. Well, that's uh, we don't even get Cal is it the California stop sign stop where they just keep right on rolling and slow down and roll through it. I, I wouldn't even get that around here on some of them. It, it is it is interesting. Uh, we were going out the other day and we were following the truck taking the roofing off down at your place and he stopped way back in front of the castle. And I thought, what in the world is he stopping there for? Hey, one of our people were driving up the middle of the road, folks. He, you know, he had to stop. Uh, I, David, I don't know what we do with it, uh, but that's literally why he stopped right in front of the castle. <laughs> Great. Love it. But, hey, you know, I might not get my license next year when I go either. Anything? Somebody else? Had, yes, Pam. Um, hey, man, let me bring you the mic. Oh, that's all right. I can, yeah, she's... She I can project. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, well, Springfield um, Masonic Community has been nominated for three different categories for Best of Springfield, and hopefully everyone's voting every day. Uh, the voting continues through the 9th. I think eight or, eight or nine. It's yeah. the 9th, yeah. So, and there was a, there was a flyer, and it, it told you how to do it. And, yeah. Yeah. So check your mailbox out there. Yeah, there was a flyer. <laughs> I don't know how many votes it's going to take, but uh, they, they have asked us to, to vote. And, you know, I, I would suspect that every place that's on that list asks their people to stuff the ballot box. Vote early, vote often. <laughs> yes, Bob. Well, I was going to save this to later. Oh, oh, don't save anything. I was going to bring this up if no one else did. But this is the first time I've ever heard of this, this voting thing. Not, not this year is the first time I've heard about this. And uh, I hope that we, well, how many people got to, got to vote? We got a flyer in our yeah. box. Here. I did. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's what I thought. Doing a good job. Very few of us, I think we need to, to remind the newspaper, if we don't win all three categories, no, we don't tell them that, but if we don't win all three categories, then just forget I ever said anything, okay? <laughs> but if we don't win, okay, all three categories, there are a lot of people at this facility that don't get to vote because we don't have access to a computer. So only, it's very, uh, only people with computers can vote on this thing. So uh, we'll wait and see how it comes out and set your, set your mouths up. And if we win all three categories, don't mention I ever said anything about this. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Well, Mom's right. If you don't have a computer, you're probably not going to vote. But you can vote off of an iPad or a smartphone. And uh, I vote off of my iPad, and Helen, unbeknownst to her, votes off of her smartphone. So I didn't try to vote on my iPad and my smartphone because I figured it was tracked by by G e email address. <laughs> they, make you, they make you put your email in yeah. the first time you vote. Yeah. But it definitely tracks my browser. <laughs> so uh, vote early, vote often. Ho hopefully, I, I don't know, I'm sure everybody's stuffing it. Anybody else? Well, okay. If that's it, Mike? Yes? Yeah. Mary? No? If nothing else, could we have a motion to adjourn, please? Second? Got it, Raleigh. Would you please stand? Tammy, I didn't see you come back in. Do you want to dismiss us? Sorry, go ahead. Heavenly Father, as we are about to depart, we pray, Lord, that you would continue to guide our paths and direct our lives and keep us safe and sound. We thank you, Lord, for the Springfield Masonic community and all those who labor on our behalf and through the hundreds of years that this place has been. We thank you for all the Masons and others who have donated to make this place what it is. We thank you, Lord, for all that we have and all that we're going to have because we know it's a manifestation of your love for us. We thank you, Lord, for this day and pray that you would use us, that someone might see your precious Son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate you.